From the CUBE studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a CUBE Conversation. Hi everyone, this is Dave Vellante of the CUBE and we're getting ready for the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. Four geographies, eight tracks, more than 40 sessions for this global event. It starts on November 17th, where we're tracking the rise of the data cloud. You're going to hear a lot about that. Now, by now, you know the story of Snowflake, or you know what, maybe you don't, but a new type of cloud native database was introduced in the middle part of last decade. And a new set of analytics workloads has emerged that is powering a transformation within organizations. And it's doing this by putting data at the core of businesses and organizations. You know, for years, we marched to the cadence of Moore's law. That was the innovation engine of our industry. But now that's changed. It's data plus machine intelligence plus cloud. That's the new innovation cocktail for the technology industry and industries overall. And at the Data Cloud Summit, we'll hear from Snowflake executives, founders, technologists, customers, and ecosystems partners. And of course, you're going to hear from interviews on theCUBE. So let's dig in a little bit more. And to help me are two Snowflake experts. Felipe Hoffa is a data cloud advocate and Kent Graziano is a chief technical evangelist, both at Snowflake. Gents, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having us on. This is great. Thank you. So guys, first I got to congratulate you on getting to this point. You've achieved beyond escape velocity and obviously one of the most important IPOs of the year, but you got a lot of work to do and I know that. What, what are the substantive, substantive aspects behind the data cloud? I mean, it's a, it's a new concept, right? We've been talking about infrastructure clouds and uh, SaaS applications living in an application cloud. So the data cloud is the ability to really share all that data that we've been collecting. You know, we've, we've spent what, how many, a decade or more with big data now, but have we been able to use it effectively? And that's that's really where the data cloud is coming in and, and Snowflake and making that a more seamless, friendly, easy experience to get access to the data. Um, I've been in data warehousing for nearly 30 years now and our dream has always been to be able to augment an organization's analytics with data from outside their organization. And that's just been a massive pain in the neck with having to move files around and, and replicate the data and maybe losing track of where it came from or where it went. And the data cloud is really giving our customers the ability to do that in a much more governed way, a much more seamless way, and really make it push button to give anyone access to the data they need and have the performance to, to do the analytics in near real time, it, it's it's total game changer as as you already know, I and mean, just it's crazy uh, what we're able to do today compared to what we could do when I started out in my career. Well, I'm going to come back to that because I want to tap your historical perspective. But Felipe, let me let me ask you, what, so why did you join Snowflake? You're you're the newbie here. What, what attracted you? Exactly, I'm the newbie. I used to work at Google uh, until August. I was there for ten years. I was. A uh, developer advocate there, also for data. Uh, you might have heard about uh, BigQuery. I was doing a lot of that. And then, um, as time went by, uh, Snowflake started showing up more and more in my feeds, uh, within my customers, uh, in my community. And it came the time when I felt that, like, you know, uh, when wherever you're working, uh, once in a while you think. I should leave this place, I should try something new, I should move my career forward. While at Google, I thought that so many times, as anyone would do, and it was only when Snowflake showed up, like uh, where Snowflake is going now, how Snowflake is, uh, is being received by all the customers, that I saw this opportunity and I decided that moving to Snowflake would be a step forward for me. And so far I'm pretty happy, like the timing has been incredible, but more than the timing and everything, it's really, really a great place uh, for data. Um, what I love first is data, sharing data, analyzing data, and how Snowflake is doing it. it for me it's been phenomenal. So Ken, I want to come back to you and, and I say tap maybe your historical perspective here. And, and you said, 
you know, it's always been a dream uh, that, that you could do these other things, bring in external data. I, I would say this, that I want to push a little bit on this because I have often said that the EDW marketplace really never lived up to its promises of 360 degree views of the customer, uh, real time or near real time analytics. Uh, and, and it really has been, as you kind of described, a, a real challenge for a lot of organizations. When Hadoop came in, you know, we, had, we, we got excited that it was gonna, gonna actually finally live up to that vision and, <laughs> and, and Hadoop did a lot, and don't get me wrong, I mean, the whole concept of you know, bring the compute to data and, and, it, and, it, and lowering the cost and so forth, but it certainly didn't minimize complexity. And, and it seems like, feels like Snowflake is on the cusp of actually delivering on that promise that we've been talking about for 30 years. I wonder if you could share your perspective. Is it, are we going to get there this time? Yeah, and as far as I can tell, working with all of our customers, some of them are there. I mean, they're, they fought through those struggles that you were talking about that I saw throughout my career. Um, and now with getting on Snowflake, they're, they're delivering customer 360. They're integrating web logs and IOT data with structured data from their ERP systems, their CRM systems, their supply chain systems. And it, it really is coming to fruition. I mean, the, you know, the industry leaders, you know, Bill Inman and Claudia Amhoff, they've had this vision the whole time but the technology just wasn't able to support it. And the cloud, as we said about the internet, changed everything. And then Benoit and Thierry and their, in their vision and building the system, taking the best concepts from the Hadoop world and the data lake world and the enterprise data warehouse world and putting it all together into this, this architecture that's now you know, Snowflake and the data cloud solved it. I mean, it's the, you know, the, the classic benefit of hindsight is 2020. After years in the industry, they had seen these problems and said, like, how can we solve them? Does the cloud let us solve these problems? And the answer was yes, but it did require writing everything from scratch and starting over with, because the architecture of the cloud just allows you to do things that you just couldn't do before. You know, I'm glad you brought up, you know, some of the, the originators of, of the data warehouse because it really wasn't their fault. They were, you know, trying to solve a problem. No. It was the, the marketers that took it and <laughs> really kind of <laughs> made promises that they couldn't keep. But the reality is when you talk to customers in the, in the sort of old EDW days, and this is the other thing I want to, I want to tap you guys' brains on, it was very challenging. I mean, one, one customer, one time referred to it as a snake swallowing a basketball. And what he meant by that is, you know, every time there's a change, you know, Sarbanes-Oxley comes in, we have to ingest all this new data. It's like, oh, it's just, everything slows down to a grinding halt. Every time Intel came out with, with a new microprocessor, they would go out and grab a new server as fast as they possibly could. He called it chasing the chips. And it was this endless cycle of pain. And so, you know, the originators of the, the data warehouse, they didn't, they didn't have you know, the compute power, they didn't have the, the cloud. Yeah. Uh, and so, and, and of course they didn't have the 30, 40 years of pain to, to draw upon. Uh, but, but I wonder if you could, could maybe talk a little bit, bit about the kinds of things that can be done now that we haven't been able to do heretofore. Well, yeah, I, I remember early on having a conversation with, uh, with Bill about this idea of near real time data warehousing and saying, is, is this, real? Is this something really neat people need? And at the time, he, which was a couple decades ago, he said, no, to them, they, they just want to load their data sooner than once a month. Yeah, That was the goal. And they, that was going to be near real time for them. And, but now I'm seeing it with our customers. It's like, now we can do it, you know, with things like the Kafka technology and uh, Snowpipe in, in Snowflake that people are able to get that refresh way faster and have near real time analytics access to that data in a much more timely manner. And so it really is coming true. Um, and the, the compute power that's there, as you said, you know, we, we've now got this compute power in the cloud that we never dreamed of. I mean, you would think of only certain very large, massive global companies or governments could afford supercomputers. And that's what it would have taken. And now we've got nearly the power of a supercomputer 
in our mobile device that we all carry around with us. So being able to harness all that now in the cloud is really opening up opportunities to do things with data and access data in a way that, again, really we just kind of dreamed of before. It's like, we can, we can democratize data when we get to this point. And I think that's, the, that's where we are. We're, we're at that uh, inflection point where now it's, it's possible to do it. So the challenge on organizations is going to be, how do we do it effectively? How do we do it with agility? And, and how do we do it in a governed manner? You mentioned Sarbanes-Oxley, GDPR, CCPA, all of those are out there. And so we have all of that as well. And so that's where, that's where we're going to get into it, right, is into the governance and being able to do that in a very quick, flexible, extensible manner and you know, Snowflake's really letting people do it now. Well, yeah, and, and you know, you, again, we've been talking about Hadoop, and I, again, for all my my fond thoughts of that that era, and it's not like Hadoop is gone, but but it was a lot of excitement around it. But but governance was a huge problem, and it was kind of a, a bolt on. Now, Felipe, I got to ask you, like, when you think about a company like Google, your former employer, you know, data is at the core of their business. And so many companies, the data is not at the core of their business. Some, something else is, it's a process or a manufacturing facility or, you know, whatever it is. And the data is sort of on the outskirts, you know, we often talk about in, in stovepipes. And so we're now seeing organizations really put data at the core of their, it becomes, you know, central to their, to their DNA. I'm curious as to your thoughts on that. And also if you, you've got a lot of experience with developers, is there, is there a developer angle here in this new data world? Uh, for sure. Um, I mean, I love seeing every, like throughout my career at Google and my two months here, I'm talking to so many companies that uh, you never thought before, like these are database companies, but the, the ones that keep growing, the ones that keep moving to the next, um, stage of their development is because they are focusing on data, they are adapting their processes, they are learning from it. And me, I focus a lot on developers. So I mean, when I started this career as an advocate, uh, first I was a software engineer and my work so far has been work. Uh, I really love talking to the engineers on the other companies like uh, maybe I'm not the one solving the business problem, but at the end of the day, when these companies have a business problem, they want to grow, they want to have data. Uh, there are other engineers, data scientists like me that are that that want to work for work for the company and bring the best technology to solve their problems. Um, yeah, for example, there's so much where data can help. Yes as we evolve the systems for the company, and also for us for understanding the systems, uh, things like observability. And recently uh, there was a big company, uh, a big launch on observability, uh, uh, the co company name is Observable, where they are running all of their data warehousing needs and all of their data needs on Snowflake. Just because running these massive systems and being able to see how they're working generates a lot of data. And then how do you manage it? How do you analyze it? Oh, Snowflake is ready there to help. Well, and you know, cover the two areas. It, it's, it's interesting, my, my business partner, John Furrier, co-host of theCUBE, he said, gosh, I, I would say middle of the last decade, maybe even around the time, you know, 2013, when Snowflake was just coming out, he said, he predicted the data would be the new development kit. And, uh, you know, it's really at the center of a lot of, you know, the data life cycle, the, the, what I call the data pipelines. I know people use that term differently, but, but I, I'm, I'm very excited about the Data Cloud Summit and what we're going to learn there. And I get to interview a lot of really cool people. Uh, and so I appreciate you guys coming on, but Ken, who, who should attend the Data Cloud Summit? I mean, what, what, are they, what should they expect to learn? Well, as you said earlier, Dave, there's there's so many tracks and there's really kind of something for everyone. So we've got uh, a track on unlocking the value of the data cloud, which is really going to speak to you know, the business leaders, you know, as to what that vision is. What can we do from an organizational perspective with the data cloud to get that value from the data to, to move our, our businesses forward? But we've also got, you know, for the technicians migrating to Snowflake sessions on how to do the migration, uh, modernizing your data lake, 
uh, data science, you know, how to do analytics with the, and data science in Snowflake and in the data cloud, and even down to building apps so the developers and building data products. So, you know, we've got stuff for developers, we've got stuff for data scientists, we've got stuff for the, uh, the data architects like myself and the data engineers on how to how to build all of this out. And then there's going to be some industry solution spotlights as well. So we can talk about different verticals, uh, folks in fintech and in healthcare, there's going to be stuff for them. And then for our, uh, our data superheroes, we have a, a hallway track where we're going to get talks from uh, the folks that are in our data superheroes, which is really our community advocacy program. So these are folks that are out there in the trenches using Snowflake, delivering value at, at their organizations. And they're going to talk, you know, down and dirty. Uh, how did they make this stuff happen? So there's going to be just a, a really something for everyone. Uh, fireside chats with our executives, of course, something I'm really looking forward to myself. It's always fun to, to hear from Frank and Christian and Benoit about, you know, what's the next big thing? You know, what are we doing now? Where are we going with all of this? And then there is going to be uh, some awards. We'll be giving out our, our data driver awards for our most innovative customers. So this is going to be a lot, a lot for everybody to consume and enjoy and learn about this, this new space of, of the data cloud. Well, thank you for that, Kent. And I'll second that. I mean, there's going to be a lot for everybody. If you're an existing Snowflake customer, there's going to be a, a plenty of 201 content where you can get in you know, to the how-tos and the best practice. If you're really not that familiar with Snowflake or you, you, you're not a customer, there's a lot of 101 content going on. So Felipe, I'd love to hear from you what people can expect at the Data Cloud Summit. Totally. So I would like to plus one to everyone that Ken said, we have a phenomenal schedule that day, the executive will be there. Uh, but I really wanted to especially highlight the session I'm preparing with Trevor Noah. I'm sure you must have heard of him and we are having him at the Data Cloud Summit. And we are going to have a session, we are going to talk about data. We, we are preparing a session that's all about how people that love data, that people that want to make data actionable, uh, how can they bring storytelling and make it more, have more impact as he has well learned to do through his life. That's awesome. So yeah, Trevor Noah, we're not just going to totally geek out here. We're going we're gonna to have some great entertainment as well. So I want you to go to snowflake.com and click on Data Cloud Summit 2020. Mm -hmm. There's four geos. It starts on November 17th and then runs through the week and then the following week in Japan. So, so check that out. We'll see you there. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. Thanks for watching.